So I'm going to try not to slide these tires around too terribly much. But of course you can't be so precious with them that you lose pace. Shit. Dead. Okay, we're back. After a few races in Project Cars 2, we're back to Gran Turismo. In another last of first challenge, this time in the undeniably beautiful Aston Martin V12 Vantage. Let's do it. Okay. Here's the deal. Arcade mode, custom race. We are going to go to St. Croix in the B version of the circuit. 4.4 miles, basically. We'll take a dawn race. All right, and what the conditions are is six laps, starting last, Largest rolling start interval available. Um, no boost. Turn that rubber banding off. Fuel consumption to four times. Tire wear to five times. Uh, that is um, just kind of adds a little wrinkle to the racing. It doesn't actually... Um, I don't need to pit. You know, for tires or fuel, and I also don't need to do any crazy fuel conservation with lifting and coasting or short shifting or managing my fuel mixture or anything like that. It just adds another little interesting twist to the race. Okay, so the conditions of the race are as follows. What we're going to do is um, we're going to use the uh, bounce of performance, homologation, performance indexing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it actually ups the horsepower by 12%. Because, you know, to be fair against these other GD3 cars, the Vantage is somehow <laughs> underpowered, uh, but it adds 6% weight. But um, that's to help really compete with the, with the BMWs. Those are the main, your opponents here, uh, really more than anything. I'm on racing medium tires. Um, the only other adjustments that I've made are I gave myself a customizable transmission, and I tweaked it just a little bit. You can see the settings here. It's not, you know, massively tweaked or anything. But that's it. And then, of course, the uh, in the driving stuff, we're going to have traction control is off and ABS is off. So, having said that, let's do six laps around here at St. Croix B. Uh, and, and again, this is really more, you know, about a battle between you and the, the BMW M6s. Because, uh, you know, in this race, with this balanced performance, anybody can get up to the top three. Anybody can, that's not an accomplishment. It's, it's getting to the top three and then getting past the, the two BMWs up there because they have such a head start advantage with that, you know, that large rolling uh, start interval as well as just more power than anybody else. So getting to P3 is not going to be an accomplishment. Getting to P1, that's where it becomes more difficult here. Uh, but having said that, uh, let's get underway. Okay, we're underway. Give him a little flash of the lights, let him know we're coming. Give him something else to think about other than getting through that corner cleanly. I, I don't like about racing this track at this time of day is right there for turn one you can't make out the numbers on the uh, corner markers which is not a big deal if you're paying attention when you're coming down the front straight but if you get distracted or something happens and you forget to count corner boards you're kind of like oh where's my braking reference Okay, so like I said, getting by these other guys is not a huge issue. 
were very impressive. Our battle is really against those two beamers in front. So getting past these guys is nothing special, but to get to the front and to be able to pass those guys, you kind of need to put together six qualifying laps, and you try to have to you kind of have to try to minimize how much this other traffic slows you down, because really that's all they can do is slow you down and get in your way. You also need to manage your tires a, a little bit so you've got something left when you do reach the leaders to do battle with. If you spent your tires getting by this traffic, got nothing left for the leaders. It's going to be real tough getting by. Of course, you can't be so precious with your tire wear either that you aren't going fast. Hey, 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 traffic jam. Traffic jam in the final turn. Look at that. We got past. That is the opposite direction of the direction that we need to go. Got slowed up by that stupid heckin' Supra. God damn it. I say getting by these guys is nothing. And then I sit here and have trouble getting by the guys. I'm doing all kinds of backing into corners and sliding the fucking car around doing exactly the kind of non-tire saving strategy that I just talked about. I should not be battling those guys. I should have been by them. Working on the next guys up there. You see the leader is 16 seconds ahead. 16 seconds is a lot to make up and like four and a half laps. Boy, being close enough to get in that slipstream would be nice. Next bunch. Next bunch. Whew. I gained three seconds on the leaders. They're 13 seconds now. Turn in, turn. Slowly chipping away at the leaders. Hello, Rev Limiter. This is a serious pack right here. Come on, Audi. All right, at least give me a toe. 
you're gonna log jam me up here. Please give me a tow. Ford GT, get out of my way. Or give me a tow. Look at him just walking away from me. Just walking away. Even with that extra 12% power that the balance of performance gives you, these other guys will definitely still walk away from you. So it's not entirely effortless getting by these guys, but... But as you know, the way Polyphony Digital makes you feel good about yourself in these single-player races is by nerfing the AI driver's ability to get through corners. So even if they're faster than you in a straight line, you, all you, you know, all you gotta do is halfway know how to corner and you can just chew them up and spit them out. hard fought. Oh, and here he comes back, because he's got more power. Well, go ahead, dude. Let me tuck in. Jesus. Speaking of AI drivers not knowing how to get through corners. Okay, now, having said all that, I'm through all that bullshit traffic now. In P3, got two laps to go. And to catch these leaders, the leader's seven seconds ahead. Next guy is 6.2 seconds up. Now is where the real race begins. Now the real Dark Souls Gran Turismo begins. But at least now, <clears throat> without these AI drivers that can't corner their way out of a wet paper bag, are not in my way. Now I just gotta string together some qualifying laps. On slightly worn tires. but also less weight because of fuel consumption. So they're down to 4.2 seconds. I can see them, I can catch them. I hope. Just 
just a slight lift to help me turn in there. to start the final lap. What can we do here? Uh, we can understeer wide into turn one, apparently, is what we can do. Sit here and flash my lights at him and try to distract him. a bit cheeky. And by a bit, I mean hell of cheeky. But hey, I ain't got time to just mess around. This is the last lap. in. Man, this guy's tough. And the other beamer's right on my tail, too, waiting for me to make a mistake. And come on, let's get by, let's get by. Lift and turn in. Got the downshift here. All right. Let's hold on to it. Oh, shit, there he went on the inside. Ha <laughs> ha, the repass. The repass. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Victory. Just by the skin of my teeth. Look at that. Look at that. We beat the Beamers. The Beamers have been beaten. Damn, that was fun. That was just the right amount of challenge. For me, anyway. Obviously, you know, chances are you're probably better than I am, and that might not be any challenge at all. But for me, the perfect amount of challenge. The perfect, perfectly dialed in challenge level. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.